<sighs> it's two o'clock. It's two o'clock and everyone seems bored. One could say overboard. You think to yourself, things need to change around here. Time seems to grind to a halt when suddenly... Take control. Finally available. Call now. Click here. <laughs> Rings a bell. Put away your credit card for now. We all want what's best for our students. We all want to get a class full of motivated, task and gross, fully engaged, prolific, and questioning students. We all do. Many of us try to find new technologies to help generate that effect in class. We look at gizmos, the whatchamacallit 2.0, the latest version of the cloud-puffed, espresso-driven, who knows what. Thing is, all these shiny new baubles are meh, yep, meh, as in mostly, educationally, hollow. Nothing really pedagogical or educational in here. Zip, nada, rien. A meh technology might not be all that bad, mind you. Think for a minute of your trusty old blackboard, your pencil, your TV set, your computer. All of them are mostly educationally hollow. Meh. It's what you actually do or allow to be done with these technologies that could prove to be useful in a teaching and learning setting. Don't get me wrong. Technologies may be meh, but it doesn't mean that we should refrain from looking at them, testing them, discussing them, or even adopting them. Let's indulge. Let's delve into as many pieces of technology as we fancy. All we need to do is let our gaze wander around a bit while holding our course. Pun intended. We are required to teach, and our students are required. well, our students need to... They should learn, and we're here to help them with that. Every piece of technology we look at, test, or discuss about should help in some part of that simple, yet complex, teacher-learner relationship. What helps us stay the course is the program. Yep, the program could even be compared to the mast onto which we hang our sails and make the best of winds and currents to safely get to harbor. Just like Ulysses in the Odyssey. Yeah. That noble fellow from an ancient poem was in a boat. On his adventurous way back home, he had to cross a region of the sea populated by sirens. The specialty of these so-called ladies of the deep was to lure sailors off course with their seductive, beckoning chants. To us, these sirens may take the form of an infomercial or a Twitter feed chanting the amazing features of a seemingly educational software or website. Good guy Ulysses tied himself to the mast of his boat. That way, he managed to stay his course while getting to hear the sirens chant their hollow promises. Thanks to the strategy, he stayed on course and kept it real. <laughs> Returning to our reality, we surely don't need to tie anyone to anything, even though the comparison still holds. We simply need to be in line with the program. When pondering the use of any given technology, we first have to evaluate if it will be of any help to our students, to us, or both. A software, a website, or some sort of other device could be totally motivating and alluring, but still remain meh. Even worse, it could also prove to be distracting and totally off course. It's quite all right to get a technology that is helpful only to us teachers. Yes, it's all right, as long as we can use it to create a learning and evaluation situation, or LES, or pilot it, or uh, evaluate students' learning progress, plan a course, communicate, or even take part in some professional networking. We all have our professional needs intricately connected to our competencies. If a piece of software can help along with that, then great. As for our students' needs, they mostly revolve around being able to find, gather, and organize significant information, communicate with us or with one another, and being called upon to reflect on their learning process or metacognition, if you prefer. Other subtleties join along the way, for sure, but these four elements cover the crucial parts of a learner's activities. Well, let's not get overboard. Allowing students to use technology in class does not necessarily mean that it's automatically pedagogical per se. As my esteemed colleague Marc-André Lalande often says, Rubbing a cinder block on a student doesn't make it a pedagogical cinder block. <laughs> For the old cartoon enthusiasts among us, we know that only Peter Pan could sprinkle fairy dust on kids and make them fly. In the real world, sprinkling student dust on a technology doesn't make it fly either. Wait, what? Student dust? <laughs> Ew, gross. When everyone seems bored. Overboard. Don't go overboard with technologies. So, keep on browsing, tweeting, liking, testing, and discussing technology. Just remember to stay the course, again pun intended, mind the sirens, and teach on. The world needs you.